There we go. For some reason, things weren't working right, but oh well. Oh, hello, folks. Welcome back for I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. And I'm here to talk... <coughs> Hopefully not about coronavirus. That would be very bad. But I'm here to talk about some pro wrestling. And for some reason, my YouTube channel was acting up a little bit, but that's okay. I managed to, f to do something anyway. Let's see here. Oh, first off, I have to amend an answer I, I gave. Um, let's see here, let me pull this up quickly. Busty Wrestling Lover. I like that. Someone gave me a thumb. Some jerk gave me a thumbs down. That's okay. Busting wrestling busty wrestling lover gave me a thumbs up or at least he left a comment and to clarify your answer i think i gave a whole bunch of names because again there's some real amazing talent but this nixon newell this is my favorite female wrestler yes she's right there again you, you can tell well that's her that's me and i look just utterly confused so again nixon newell Favorite female wrestler. Again, very... I think this is actually the very first selfie. <coughs> wow, that granola does not go down well. That's the very first female wrestler. I think that's also my very first selfie, too. So again, Nixon has a special place in my heart. <coughs> well, I'm dying, folks. I don't think I have a coronavirus. I don't care. This will solve all of my issues, probably. Ooh, that dislodged something. That's good. I feel better. But again, Busty Wrestling Lover, thank you very much. I hope I answered your question. You, sir, because you left a comment, you get this very special video I made of Jordan has back. Oh my god, Becky, look at her butt. Wow. I like big butts and I cannot lie. Now remember for that, you're the only one in today. So there, let's talk about some money in it all. Let's get this video rolling. Rolling. Um, starts off with Retribution. Burn! My name is Jane Dawson, and I'm here to take you to the rest of the land so I can really conquer the kind of beef you have spots, man. I dare you to come off of me, yes, so I'm here to cause chaos, not man. Oh, wait. There's a bunch of wrestlers in this ring. But wait, Batman, I shall be coming one day for you. Yes, you, you hobo cat, I will be coming after you. That's what it sounded like, because it sounded like Bane was talking to the audience. And again, if you're going to have a muffled voice like Bane, you might as well wear a mask. And yes, although it is required to wear a mask nowadays, you really should cover most of your face and your mouth. And just don't have bars across it. Yes, because I am Bane. Yes, Batman. Yes, you know now where to find me, Batman. You can find me in the Thunderdome. Yeah, <clears throat> so that's the way that went. Might as well have. You want me? Do you want me? You want me, Bane Cat? Oh, my cat's pestering me. It's like it's time, it's time for me to go to sleep because I've been kind of loopy. Long day, no nap. So yeah, you know how those goes. Um, and then Herd Club comes out. And then all of a sudden, there's so many members of Retribution. Like, did they call, did they just tell the whole NXT roster? It's like, hey, listen, we need you guys to come out for one night. Who knows? Um, then the next match, you have the Street Profits. Come out on commentary. They have the exploding um, party solo cups come out. It'll be interesting to see how they do that if crowds ever come out. Because that's like getting a free souvenir. Even though I'm sure it's relatively cheap. 
Although they, because I know they actually do sell licensed street party solo cups, or they used to at NXT events, and they were like expensive too. They're like ten bucks. It's not happening. You can see, see see the bat cat back there, the hobo kitty. What are you doing? I'll be going to bed soon. Don't worry. We'll get some bedtime. Um, so uh, they came out to be on commentary. Then it was Seth Rollins taking on. Uh, Seth Rollins and Murphy taking on Andrade and Angel Garza. Uh, taking on Alberto Carrillo, Dalegas, and Dominic Mysterio, Prince Mysterio. Uh, so this was a triple threat to determine a contender for the um, Clash of Champions. And oddly enough, they're like advertising, I think, October's pay-per-view already. So it's it's gonna be weird, and I'm acting weird because playing. With, I'm annoying my cat because she's being pesty, but that's okay. She's she's cute and fluffy. Let's see here. No, get over, Chispa. Chispa, come here. Oh, that's okay. She just wanted to be pet. I had, I had to leave and actually go to my other job, and after staying home all day, she she got confused. But that's okay. Um, so this was actually a pretty fun match. Um. Murphy and Umberto start off. Angel Garza, Angel Garza is like, see ya. I'll let you guys fight it out. And very smart. Um, so Garza goes outside. Then some, and, uh, eventually Andrade and Garza get in because they beat up Umberto because they just don't like him for whatever many multitude of reasons they have from the past. Um, but then I'll tell you what. Umberto and Dominic Mysterio. Dominic from the top rope. Umberto kind of diving. They do, let's see, I wrote down the description here. So yeah, Andrade and Garza, they beat Umberto, but then eventually Umberto and Dominic, they do a flying crossing cross body. That was pretty impressive. That actually takes some timing. What are you doing down there? Being fussy. Cat. All day she craves attention at my desk, and now that she wants some evening attention. She's like, I was going to meow around you. That's okay. Uh, she, she's just too cute not to ignore. Uh, let's see here. Then Dominic. Dominic actually hit a Lucha Destroyer. It was pretty cool because he set up Andrade for it. Andrade kind of caught him, but then Andrade let him get his momentum back at the Lucha Destroyer. Really good to see. Again, Dominic Mysterio, you, you're just he just learned so much from his dad. I don't care what training he's had. He is probably the number one trainer in Rey Mysterio Jr. Uh, Murphy eventually clears the ring. He looks to tag in Seth. Seth, like, walks out. Um, we'll, we'll hear more from Seth later, and Seth is getting weird. Again, 19-year-old, I don't know. Hey, Whatever floats Seth's boat, who knows? Maybe Becky Lynch isn't looking as pretty as she used to now that she's pregnant. Seth! You've ruined so many wrestling careers. Becky Lynch is being one of them. Um, Seth leaves the ring, and then eventually leaves Murphy there. Uh, he gets wing clipped by Angel Garza. Angel Garza and Andrade go on to face the Street Profits at Clash of Champions. Something weird is going to happen because I have a funny feeling this might be the only belt that changes hands. Unless something odd happens on SmackDown. But we'll see. Um, this was a fun match, though. Uh, Street Party really played up. Uh, Street Profits. Street Party. Get them confused with the EW Private Party. Um, I mean, they're going to call them, call them Street Party or Private Profits. <laughs> but this was actually pretty fun. A solid cheeseburger match. Then Kevin Owens has a Kevin Owens show. He invites Shane McMahon out. And then Baba Tunde comes out. Um, he's now Daba Kato. I don't know why they changed names so often. Baba Tunde was so much easier. But no, no. 
Dun dun dun. And they change themes. Dun dun dun. Dun dun dun. Because Baba Tender used to come out to Samoa Joe's theme. And I see, because I'm like. Because I remember, I think the last live show I saw for NXT, I'm like. That's Samoa Joe's music. And Baba Tende came out. Hey, they have a license to it. They can do what they want. Then, yeah, so. So he calls out Shane McMahon and says, hey. Kevin Owens says, hey, you're a genius promoter, but I want your big man. Yeah, we got he got involved in my match. KO slapped him. And then say, yeah, so now we're going to bring up Braun Strowman. And then as Braun Strowman and um, Daba Kato stare down at each other, um, like behind his back, and I have no idea where he came from, Alistair Black dropped, um, pulled the legs out from underneath Kevin Owens, posted him in the crotch like twice against the ring post. Viciousness. Then we have Drew McIntyre promo, which leads to the Keith Lee. Oh, bask in his glory. Oh, bask in his glory. Cat's just looking at herself now. Um, taking on Drew McIntyre. And this is actually pretty good. Drew starts off, um, try to go for the Claymore right off the back. Uh, Keith Lee steps up. Yeah, that's going to attack you, cheese <laughs> Uh Silly. Uh, um, he goes for the Claymore, but now Keith Lee steps up to him, puts him in a headlock. They exchange headlocks for a little bit. Uh, Keith Lee either looked like a bad pounce or like a shoulder tackle drew outside of the ring. That was pretty cool to see. The double chops by the Grizzly Magnum by Keith Lee onto Drew. That just sounds like it hurts. Um, Drew then eventually drops Keith Lee on the table. That was amazing. Um, there was a big splash into the corner by Keith Lee. The big farm to Drew. Keith Lee's like, what did I do? And it's like, it felt good. So, so now he knows, of course, Drew McIntyre has that compromised jaw from eating so many RKOs and punts from Randy Orton. So um, that's kind of becomes a focal point. But Drew, um, when Drew got up almost into a spirit bomb by Keith Lee, he managed a hurricanrana. That's no easy feat for a guy as big and as long as he is. He's not a lanky fellow, folks. Um, then he had a pretty big spine buster on Keith Lee. Not a great looking spine buster, but a spine buster nonetheless. And then big heavy strikes in the clothesline from Keith Lee. Uh, Drew went for a Claymore. And then out of nowhere, it's the Viper. The Viper, Randy Orton comes out, uh, nails through with a steel chair, punts Keith Lee. It's a DQ finish, baby. But it gave ourselves a dusty cheeseburger because we had a dusty finish because Drew McIntyre got hit. Therefore, Drew McIntyre wins. Everyone wins. No one wins. In a dusty old cheeseburger match. The Norton cuts a promo, shaming the crowd. Very typical stuff. Um, and also cuts a promo on Peyton Royce in the back with Billy Kay there. Because um, I guess Billy Kay is now officially manager. And we have Mickey James versus Selena Vega. And wow, was this not good. Selena Vega is so tiny. Selena Vega is just jobber fodder right now, especially to Asuka. I don't know what, you know what, I know when El Vago Bundo stops on by, probably Thursday, because he's been pretty good at his, his predictions. I don't know what his Stone Cold's lock going to be, because I would have a tough time picking a Stone Cold lock. It's either going to be As Asuka retaining her belt or Roman Reigns retaining his belt. That's just too hard to call, I think. As we continue, Ooh, that did feel good. Yeah, I had some weird piece of granola stuck in the back of my throat. Or it's that weird spot. I can never get out. Um, Vega and Mickey, they just like go into like hair pulling contest. Um, Vega then gets tossed. Eventually, get back backs up, reverses something into the octopus lock. Uh, Mickey James is a seated senton. Vega hit a backstabber, and that was it? Something... Something's not right with Mickey James. 
It could be that she's holding on too long. Something gave out, and she's like, no, I can push through it. She never winds up good. She's getting, she's, she's up there in her 40s, though, too. Um, father time wins. No two ways to say it. So, yeah, this, I don't know, it just seemed really botchy. It, it seemed forced. This match was a can of soup. You know, the Hurt Business, they actually jumped the jobber retribution people outside. That was good to see. Uh, Bianca Belair's little promo of her at the gym out muscling some guy. Not very hard. Um, I know guys that... Um, uh, Brian from St. Anselm's College. Like, I knew, like, basketball player girls that could, like, bench press more than he could. So, yeah. Um, I'm not really impressed by that. Our truth He goes to Daytona Beach! Or actually, because there's a shark in the water, maybe he's in the new Smyrna Beach. I don't know, but he's definitely at the beach. It's probably here on the east, I think. Yeah, Orlando's kind of in the middle, but it's closer to at least the, the Daytona Beach area. So as far as I know, he was here. Um, drops the belt in the water. Tozawa and his ninja referee, they, they tried to uh, hide in the ocean. If it's new Smyrna Beach, that's a bad idea. I think it's like like the like Nemo shark infested waters. I think on the east coast of the US. I want to say it's actually top 10 in the world for shark attacks, I think. Again, you marks out there, you can always correct me if you want to. I want to say it's at least in the top 10 shark attack places in the world. It's up there a little bit higher in the US. I think mainly because. I know there's the one inlet. Like, New Smyrna Beach is literally between the two inlets, Ponce and Canaveral. And all the bull sharks do mate and have their young in the intercoastal waterway. So, you have a lot of sharks coming in and out there. Every so often, you'll catch the King Wahoo. They'll, they'll destroy things. Um, Barracuda will rip will just pierce flesh. So yeah, there's a lot, lot of like toothy things out there in that part. So again, be careful if you go swimming there. I like Ormon Beach. Daytona Beach is, Daytona Beach is, the beach physically is better, the sand is softer, the people are scuzzier. Ormond Beach, the sand is rougher, but the people are classier, especially the women and the less than bikinis. Who should be wearing less than bikinis, by the way. Um, so, yeah. He's swimming in the ocean with his belt. That was kind of funny. Then we have Cedric Alexander taking on Apollo Crews. Uh, Cedric gets beat up early in this match. And he gets beat up early and often for some reason. Um, Crews hits the sliding baseball drop kick. Again, when Cedric got pulled outside by MVP to kind of break up the action. Cedric has his own little comeback uh, punctuated by a Michinoku driver. Although no one does a Michinoku driver quite like Taka Michinoku used to. Um, Apollo Crews, the, either Polish hammers or double axe handle slams. Good old school stuff. Then what else? Let's see here. There was a corner splash and into, into a pickup Simone drop. That was impressive. That's You don't see people do that every day. Cedric dives. When he goes to the outside, um, you know, to mouth off to Ricochet, the, Ricochet and, and Cedric, yeah, at, back and forth each other. Ricochet distracts, uh, distracts Cedric. Apollo wins by roll up, gets jumped by the hurt, hurt business. Not bad. I'll tell you what, it was a good solid cheeseburger match. And then we go to Raw Underground. Wow. Why did it seem so long watching it? Who knows? It was uh, Dolph Ziggler versus uh, Ruas. I'll tell you what. This is what Raw Underground should have been like a long time ago. Um, first of all, it, it actually seemed like an actual MMA, flight, MMA fight. 
Um, Rua got a big slam, and I just know the next thing he was like trying to get into a go go play. I'm like, oh wow, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, like legit, like that will legit rip your shoulder out of your socket. You're using your whole body weight and your legs as a lever against one against one shoulder. Shoulders aren't meant to take that. Yeah, it's the whole thing. Um, I think I think I've gotten into this in, in other videos. Uh, the way crucifixion was so nasty that you don't die. You didn't die easily. Like you died by asphyxiation because your your upper body is not meant to carry the weight of your whole body. Yeah, you can walk on your hands for a bit. You're not going very far. I don't care who you are. Like I think even like the best athletes, like after like a hundred yards, they're just gassed. Their shoulders are all kinds of wrecked and rubberized. So again, your shoulders are not meant to take the weight of your whole body. Just imagine your shoulder taking the weight with a lever of someone else's body. Again, that looked pretty cool. Um, Dolph, again, has a single leg. Uh, Ruas beat him to it for, for a double leg, and then he went for a double knee bar. Uh, Dolph eventually did a duck under. <laughs> he actually did a beard, a beard pull, too. Then got Ruas into a sleeper. Ruas actually goes to sleep. Probably because of his background, he can make it look the best and knows how to go. And I guess I hate to say it, but how to go to sleep. This was actually probably one of the best underground matches yet. Solid cheeseburger match. Then there's a new announcer. Brianna Bradley, Bradley? Yeah, Brianna Bradley. Indeed. Very attractive. Very attractive woman. Of African of yeah, a very attractive black woman. I'll say that. With like dyed white hair. Hey. Hey Brianna. I'm single too. Um yeah, and then it was a bronze, bronze Roman promo. Then we had Seth again. Um, he comes out, he produces a statement about the paternity of one of the Mysterio kids. And all of a sudden, I'm like, Eddie, 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 Eddie Guerrero is making a comeback, but no. So, yeah, like. The whole Aaliyah Murphy thing is kind of weird because she's only like 19. Murphy has to be up in his upper 20s. That's just like weird. Like that was weird. Like Saturday, like a 27-year-old woman like covered in tattoos, nose rings, trashy looking clothes, and some like 6-year-old grandpa. Came in the store and I'm and like they were holding hands. I'm like, uh, they're a little too affectionate. Yeah, and then that hey, then that then that hand around the waist went from like this to a little bit lower to like this. And you're like, oh, 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 I can't unsee things. Oh, that's okay. Um, so yeah, again, that whole it's just weird, and again. WWE has that shady history too, so that's not making it any better. Then we have Nia Jax. <sighs> mm, I apologize. And that granola is pain in the butt. Pain in the throat, actually. Nia Jax and Shannon Bates are taking on Lana and Natalia. Yeah, this is just more punishment for, for Lana. Hey, Lana! Happy Miro Day! <laughs> yeah, um... And Natty... Got some offense in on Nia Jax. Makes a quick tag. Yeah, Lana eats like a Samoan head, but it's just all downhill from there. Um, Natty, they uh, they tried to double team Nia Jax. Uh, Natalia did a big splash. Alana tried to do a big splash. Eventually, Nia Jax just no sold it. Tossed Natty out. Uh, Natty got dumped out, out of the ring. Poor Lana just, just gets beat up. She gets slapped. Ouch. Because Anijax tagged in Shayna Baszler. 
she got the tilt world gut buster, rear naked choke, slap, whatever. Barry Lana, she's done. Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler obviously win. Probably a ham sandwich match. And then the, the two of them, Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler, because uh, Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan are on the outside during doing commentary, saying, yeah, at least we're a cohesive team. These two, they're great singles wrestlers, but don't know anything about tag team wrestling. Um, Nia Jax and Shayna go out to confront them. Yeah, then th they get up, and Lana is like, just floating around. Nia goes through table. Again, Lana, happy Miro Day. And uh, then there's the whole thing in the Mysterio family. Again, this just gets weird. Uh, then there was Riddick Moss taking on Eric of the Viking Raiders. Uh, some good punches being thrown, each with their own big takedown. Then a hockey fight breaks out. And then Riddick Moss, like, connected squarely. And I know it was a work, but if you get hit, like, right there, Again, that's like right near that off switch. So yeah, that that dropped Eric quickly. <sighs> mm. Nasty stuff. But again, that was it was good. It was actually believable. Again, there are a lot of MMA fights that that, that win with one punch. So at least they make it believable. And then he went to the ground and pound referee. Said, "Oh no, 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 that's the end of that." This made sense. It's a ham sandwich of a match. Then Braun Strowman take, takes on, um, I don't know, that's, that's going to be up next. That was terrible. Um, Asuka taking on Peyton Royce was okay. Actually, not really. Uh, Peyton Royce, she just started to eat all of Asuka's offense. Peyton Royce, she's a very beautiful woman. I applaud <clears throat> Sean Spears for punching above his weight class. I'll tell you what, the Peyton Royce got skinny. Again, I won't body shame people, but if you're a skinny woman, if I can really see, like, vertebrae and ribs, yeah, you're a little too skinny there, sweetheart. Billy Kai is a little, a little thicker, if you know what I mean, mate. She's a, she's a good-looking Sheila that enjoys a shrimp on the barbie and a cold Foster's beer. Because <laughs> Australian, it's Foster's for beer. Or Foster's is Australian for beer. Those were still some of the funniest ads. Um, yeah, she just like she hit the widow's peak, like once got got like a two count. Um, tried to roll up. Billy Kay's manager should be interesting. Peyton got caught up on the top rope, and like Oscar was trying to get maneuver Peyton Rice into the Oscar lock from a rolling armbar from a rolling Jujikami. Then Selena Vega just comes in and attacks Asuka. And that's how the match ends. Obviously, Asuka wins because she got attacked. Peyton Royce looked absolutely terrible in this match. Billy Kay did absolutely nothing. Zelina Vega's jobber fodder come the pay-per-view. <sighs> I'm sorry, Asuka. Konnichiwa. Domo arigato. But this match was a can of soup. Then we had the whole Ali and Murphy thing backstage. Again, weird. Um, then back in Underground, we had Dabakato taking on Braun Strowman. It's just a brawl. They brawl in the ring, they brawl out the ring. Braun throws Dabakato into the ring, just pummels him. Again, that one good shot in ground and pound. This was a piece of toast.
Oh, yeah, Braun Strowman, Braun Strowman won. Then our main event of the evening. Oh, did I cut myself? Oh, yeah. Shoot. Um, main event of the evening. We see the Hurt Business taking on the three bigger members of Retribution. Ah, it was just a brawl. Again, Batman! Yes, Batman. I've come, Batman. I've come to claim the citizens of Orlando standing at the Amway Center. Yes, Batman. I'm in the Amway Center known as the Thunderdome, Batman. You know where to find me. Come and get me any time, Batman. For I shall cause chaos in the city of Orlando. Yes. Yeah. That's what I thought of the match. Um, very brawlerish. Um, Cedric series a small guy. He gets beat up a lot until he tags him with Shelton Benjamin. Benjamin gets a little bit more offense until the two big guys. It's uh, Rio and Pride Dijakovic who like painted his face. Jokerish, Dijakovic, Dijakovic. My name is Bane. I'm not the Joker. I do not wear face paint. Dijakovic. No, even the Batman knows who I am. Yeah! And then, um, yeah, Ryu gets his shots in. I forget what the big guy, it was, uh, oh, it was Mace, it was Ryu. It's probably spelled, like, weird, too. Slapjack, the, the small, skinny guy, gets beat up, um, gets put into the hurt lock. Then eventually, all, the rest of Retribution shows up. The rest of the locker room shows up. The only good, the match itself, uh, uh, toast. The only good part of it, Randy Orton comes out. Yeah, he beats up some guys from Retribution. Then he RK, then he RKO's Drew McIntyre, and that was Raw. Yes, yes, Batman. It is I, Bane. And I've taken over Raw, yes! Come get me, Batman. If not, I shall release more chaos on the citizenry of Florida, yes! Um, yeah, so that was Raw. Um, so this will go up probably tomorrow morning. Oh, schedule. Tomorrow morning this will go up. Uh, Tuesday's going to be my normal time. Wednesday, going to get into AEW. Thursday, it's gonna be. I'll probably invite uh, Dr. Tom, um, not Dr. Tom, but um, El, Hijo, El Hijo de Vagabundo Dos in for his prediction. Saturday will be probably SmackDown. Saturday, I'm off. Sunday will be pay per view. So, I'd like to thank everyone for, everyone for watching again. If you're like Busty Wrestling Lover and you have questions, I will always answer.